Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to make Docker images builds way faster. If you're building Docker images in CI, you absolutely want to be using this option. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting a bunch of time. Uh, but this option has some caveats and a little bit of history, so I'm going to go over that as well. Uh, so we're talking about cache from today in Docker build. And what cache from is, if we look at the docs, and the docs are not so great here, it allows you to add additional cache sources to Docker build. Uh, by default, Docker build will only trust images that were locally built on your actual host. Uh, it doesn't trust images that are pulled. And this is because it's really easy to introduce cache poisoning. Uh, but <laughs> because of this, it means that Docker images are, are, or Docker image builds are going to be pretty slow by default. Uh, there are some additional things to make this faster and a special metadata that's in, in the works and, and being enabled using this special flag. We'll talk about that later, uh, but I just want to talk about the base cache from argument first. Uh, this is actually relatively recent. I say relatively recent. It was originally introduced in 2016, uh, but I remember the terrible hacks you would have to do before this to import images and get Docker to trust them as cache sources, and this kind of just streamlined things such that you can use them as remote sources. But anyway, I wanted to show you kind of the, the actual <laughs> effects of this. Uh, and so I have pulled an image, Docker images. I have pulled this dead snakes focal image, and this takes about five minutes to build, and it gets built in CI. I don't want to wait those five minutes to build this image. Uh, so let's clone the runbooks repository. This is where that image lives. It is in this Docker files, Docker file .focal file. And we're going to do docker build dash t image. Uh, I'm just going to name it whatever. And I happen to know this image builds from standard in, so it uses this a little bit esoteric syntax dash means use, use the input as the Docker file, and we're going to pipe that into. The this means it has no build context, which makes it build a little bit faster, but it doesn't actually matter for this video. Uh, but if we run this, you'll notice that even though we have exactly the same image there, Docker history, GHCR, I'm actually going to control C this because it's going to take a while. Uh, Docker history, GHCR.io slash dead snakes slash uh, focal. Uh, oh, pseudo. Uh, no trunk, I believe I need. Bad password. Oh, I typoed my bad password. <laughs> uh, you'll see that even though it's running exactly the same command here, this big apt-get install, blah, 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 we missed the cache there. So it was trying to completely rebuild that from scratch, even though we have the exact image on disk. It should, it should use that as a cache, right? Uh, it doesn't. And the rationale is, is talked about more in this proposal, so you can see uh, down here is uh, you know, the, the cache poisoning problem. This is why it's not enabled by default. However, you can enable this caching by using the cache from argument and specifying any sort of remote image that you've pulled to your local host. So if we do Docker images, uh, sudo in this tab, sorry. <laughs> it's aliased in the other tab, so I don't have to type the sudo password. Um, you can tell it to use a particular cache source here. And what it'll try and do is it'll use this history here and try and match that up against the Docker file itself. Rather than just ignoring all of the uh, all of the images as cache sources, it'll try and match the histories one to one and then use those to build the final image. So you'll see if I specify cache from here, and we try and rebuild this image, it completes basically instantly because it, it matched this against the, you know, the, the cache line here from this image that we listed here. And then it didn't have to rebuild everything from source. Uh, and so that's kind of the basics of cache from. And so it's usually a pretty good idea to pull the image that you're going to be building and then specify cache from as the argument, um, or as the build argument in that case. That way you potentially hit the cache from a previously built version of this. Uh, you can also get partial hits here as well. There's only one instruction in this Docker file, but if I had other instructions afterwards, uh, you know, it could still hit the cache from that image instead. Now, I wanted to talk about the uh, additional stuff that's mentioned in cache from, because arguably this one sentence is, it doesn't really go into as much detail as I've just done here. Uh, but the rest of this is kind of important for kind of the future of this and, and some of the pitfalls you'll run into here in that uh, by default, it's not supported for multi-layered images, or sorry, uh, multi-stage images. So if you have 
multiple build stages. Uh, you know, pulling the final image isn't going to give you any of those previous stages. They're kind of just discarded. Uh, and it won't work across different container engines. So if you're using you know, Podman and Docker and you want to, uh, you know, maybe the image was built with Podman and you want to take care of the cache or you know, reuse the cache in Docker, it's not going to work across engines. And that's where this uh, standardized cache metadata comes into play. And for that, you need to specify a particular build argument. You also need to be using BuildKit, which is an optional build engine for Docker. Uh, and this will populate an additional set of JSON metadata that uh, yeah, will allow it to be used as, as cache information. Uh, and they go into more details here about that, but this is, if you're gonna be doing this, you might as well specify this argument. It's of course not necessary if you're doing cache from and, and manually pulling the image and you're not dealing with multi-stage builds, you don't really have to do this, uh, but this is kind of a new option to standardize this cache metadata. Maybe a good idea. Not necessary though, but maybe a good idea. Uh, anyway, that's Cash From. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.